All right, so we're doing an install video on a snorkel kit on this 2022 U Force 1000. And I'll show you how this stuff came in the box. This is the uh, Warrior Riser snorkel kit. First off, the directions, the way they got this stuff pictured, it's really hard to see the actual connectors and how these things are together. But they do show you how it's installed. I just find it's kind of hard to see it with the black pictures and the black plate. So anyway, we'll figure it out. Here's all your pieces and parts, three risers, CVT outlet inlet, and obviously the air box. The only thing I don't like right now, right off the bat, is the fact that it doesn't seem like the riser kit's gonna delete this air box here. I think it's gonna connect in up here. And I've seen my buddy's air box suck water in through a crack in one of the seams. So that's one thing I really don't like. Maybe we'll have to figure that out, how to get that bypassed or make a new one. Right off the bat, what you're gonna do is take this bed off. I went under there for a few minutes and was trying to look at some stuff. And as fast as it took to get the bed off, it was literally three Quick connects, it'll save you a bunch of headache trying to work under this whole, whole box. So take that thing off there, it takes you like five minutes. Basically you have two pivot points, one right here, one right here, and then take off your support and get somebody to help you pull it off. Once you get that off, you got access to everything you need. And I just feel like it's gonna be better working in this area right here versus trying to get pinched between the cargo box and this engine bay. So I'm gonna pull out these stock air boxes and we'll see what we got. All right, we got all the parts off the UTV that we need to get off. We have our, pulled that out too. I'm gonna to clean that out, a lot of dust in there, but we got our air intake ready to accept the snorkel. Again, I think I would have liked it if they did something with this, but that all stays stock. Uh, rear CVT and then the other CVT inlet I guess is going to go right here this was just a little short like 180 U-bend piece that's here under the seat so just pull your seat out pull the work tray out and those two things come out really easily so that's that once you do that you can get that off there I had a couple clamps that were rusted I had to cut off but for the most part it wasn't really hard on getting that stuff off and now we just get to go ahead and fit the snorkels on. And there's the old stuff right there. I'm gonna hold on to that. This is that little U-bend piece. So definitely, I think, opportunity for water to get into that if you're in some deep stuff. So I'm glad to see that go. So here we go, and we'll get everything fit on there now. All right, after a lot of fitting, this is what I come up with. So, the air filter part is pretty basic, obviously, just like that. And then the CVT is what I had trouble with. So those fittings that they give you or the, the connections between the oval outlet on the CVT and the two inch plate, just kind of, I wish they would have actually made a fitting or a boot that matched the oval shape. Cause I just feel like that's gonna wear that out over time, vibration is gonna break. So I have to keep an eye on that. But uh, this is kind of it. Obviously you gotta now glue all the PVC connections together. So you gotta take everything back out, glue all these joints together. The only thing that doesn't get glued is the rubber boots and they tell you to put silicone on those when you do the final tightening. Here's the 90 degree angle, I'm sorry, you know, 180 going back, 290s. And again, there's that boot. I just think that, I just think that maybe a specialized boot would probably be better for this, but I guess it works. So I tried to follow the directions, but I, I really just couldn't follow along with what this was telling me to do. I think that if they came up with a way to number everything, 
but also tell you the numbers when you're putting them together. You know, like one goes into two, goes into three, goes into four, and so on and so forth. It probably would save me like an hour of time. When I do a lot of fuel line kits and other cars, you know, they'll they'll have numbers and it just it's just a simple step to do to let the person installing this stuff get through it a lot quicker. I kind of just threw these out halfway through and just started fitting mine and stuff up. So who knows? Maybe I got it the right way, maybe I don't maybe I don't, but it works. I got two pieces left over. Two lone pieces. But I got no idea where they go. And they're not going in. So next is to take all the stuff back out, glue all the joints, and then once that's done and it's in its final spot, then we put the bed back on and we'll have to trim the bed out. The bed's got to get trimmed right here, so obviously when it falls back down, it's not hitting this, so I'll have to trim around that. So that's how we're looking right now, though. So my advice is... Don't follow the directions. Maybe call a plumber and give yourself some time and be patient. All right. All right, we got everything installed, everything glued together, and I'm gonna run down really quickly just the different bins so you can see them. That way, if you're doing this kit at home, maybe you could take a screenshot or pause it and give you a hand on putting this thing together quickly. This air intake. 90 to a 22 to a straight that one's pretty simple the cvt towards the back of the engine it's going to be a 90 45 22 straight to the boot and then a 90 45 90 so that's how that looks and the front of the transmission 90, 90, straight, 45. And then that goes out to another 45 right there. And up 90, 90. I installed these two clamps. The instruction said just zip tie it to the back of the panel, but I don't know. I think the metal clamps will hold better. And I also did just extend the rear diff breather the front is way up under the hood i don't think i'll have an issue with that i'm not really planning on swamping this thing and getting it deep in water but i just wanted to have an insurance policy in case i did uh get jammed up that i won't be sucking in any water in this motor this is the intake that i was going to do this was super straightforward i just used one of the clamp or the boots that i didn't use on the kit one of the pieces of straight and this is literally just two 90s put together so for less than 10 bucks, deleting that air box, I think is a pretty good idea. Especially, like I said, because I think my buddies sucked water in through somewhere on this, either the seam or one of these boots. It's kind of flimsy, so I don't know. All that chamber sitting there, getting rid of that is a pretty good idea to me. So that'll be gone. All right, so I'll give you one quick picture. That's how you're looking. All right, guys, quick recap. Riser kit's installed, everything's glued and tight. I think if you're getting ready to put this on your U-Force, I think you glance through the directions real fast and just get rid of them. Maybe scroll back in this video, take a look at the pipes that are on here, um, and then start your process. You may not even do it the way that I did or the way the diagram says. I think there's multiple ways that you could be fit to make it work. But as long as it's on there and it's tight and it's out of the way of everything, I think it's gonna work for what you need it for. The bed is not on yet. I have a set of Fox Racing shocks that I'm really excited about putting on here. Um, and that's the reason why I'm not putting the bed on yet. So um, I was definitely looking for a set of sporty suspension to put on this, but I can't find anything other than Elkas that all the U-Force guys are doing. But I just want to do something different. Um, I don't see why Foxes or Walker Evans or any kind of takeoffs for other machines that are just eyelid mounts won't work for these. I realize that this is a utility uh, UTV. It's got great towing capacity and cargo capacity, and that's all good. But I think me, like a lot of others, have bought these and are using them for a lot more trail riding, mud riding, you know, hard terrain. And I'm looking for 
a soft suspension that's going to have a lot of travel and take up uh, that terrain versus these standard utility springs that are very pogo-y and you know, very stiff. So um, keep a lookout for my video on that install. I'll definitely make sure I notate um, what needs to be modified, um, how the ride height was affected, how the ride quality was improved, and part numbers of the Fox shocks that I used. Um, and who knows, that might open up a whole window of shocks that we could put on these machines to make them feel, um, you know, uh, sportier and better going through trails, mud, water, dirt, all those things that you really want to do. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them for you and keep an eye out for the next video.